Hello and welcome back with another informative video. And this time we are back with hydrogen and electric vehicles. As governments strive to achieve pledges to cut carbon emissions and limit the use of fossil fuels, several automakers are looking for alternative ways to power cars and other vehicles. This includes developing technologies for electric vehicles as well as those powered by hydrogen fuel cell technology. But how do these two technologies stack up in terms of range, charging times, cost, safety, and emissions? In this video, we are trying to explain the fundamental distinctions between hydrogen and electric vehicles. How do hydrogen and electric vehicles work? To compare the two types of vehicles, it is necessary to first understand how each technology operates. A lithium-ion battery powers an electric car's motor, which in turn powers the vehicle's different components. The batteries are charged by plugging them into the power grid, just like any other electrical equipment, such as a laptop or mobile. Some electric vehicles can also provide a little recharge while braking by turning the heat created into power. Hydrogen automobiles also include an electric motor that is powered by hydrogen fuel cells, which allow hydrogen to combine with oxygen to produce energy and water vapor chemically. The motor is powered by electricity, while harmless water vapor is emitted into the atmosphere. Hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, also known as fuel cell electric vehicles, are refueled with hydrogen at service stations equipped with pressurized natural gas tanks. Both electric and hydrogen cars have a variety of advantages, which relate to the technologies themselves as well as the support and availability of each type of vehicle. Electric vehicle infrastructure is more sophisticated than hydrogen-powered vehicle infrastructure. Governments all around the world have started investing in infrastructure such as charging stations at existing gas stations and highway rest stops, shopping mall parking lots, and even on the side of certain streets. The United Kingdom also provides assistance for the purchase and installation of household charging stations. Electric vehicles are also less expensive than hydrogen-powered vehicles. And the cost of recharging is lower during off-peak grid hours, making electric vehicles an excellent long-term investment. Electric automobiles drive silently and emit no exhaust fumes, resulting in no noise or air pollution, and they spend no energy when stationary. Electric motors are also dependable since they lack moving mechanical parts, when compared to combustion engines. Hydrogen cars provide many of the same advantages as electric automobiles, including the crucial lack of polluting emissions. While the process of producing hydrogen gas can be complicated, hydrogen is the most plentiful element in the universe, making it a renewable fuel source. Hydrogen automobiles are also considerably faster to refill than electric cars and have longer ranges than electric vehicles. Renault's Kangoo ZE Hydrogen and Master ZE Hydrogen, for example, have range extender fuel cells with ranges of over 350 km and charge times of 5 to 10 minutes. Despite the benefits of electric and hydrogen vehicles, there are a number of downsides to both types of vehicles, which may and are being addressed by industry. The range of electric vehicles is possibly the most significant disadvantage when compared to the time it takes to recharge. This is dependent on the battery in the charging station used, but in general, the range and refueling durations make long-distance driving in an electric car more challenging than driving with hydrogen or traditional combustion engines. While high-power charging stations enable faster charging, they might also be more expensive to use. In Germany, where charging stations are built per kilowatt-hour, high-power charging stations are approximately 10 euros more expensive per kilowatt-hour, often 0.30 euros per kilowatt-hour, 
but can be as much as 0.90 euros per kilowatt hour on non-partner networks. The cost of recharging varies by country, with France charging 2.25 euros for 100 kilometers. Based on an average of 15 kilowatt hours every 100 kilometers, whereas the same distance would cost 3 euros in the UK. These concerns can be overcome by using a hybrid electric combustion engine system, in which the traditional engine system serves as a backup or support system for the battery hydrogen cars. The primary issue with hydrogen vehicles is a lack of infrastructure to facilitate their use. Because of the scarcity of refueling facilities, hydrogen vehicles are not yet a practical alternative for many people. However, hydrogen infrastructure is thought to be straightforward to scale up, so with the correct investment and assistance, this problem might be handled. The expense of hydrogen electricity is another major issue. Hydrogen-powered vehicles are not inexpensive, and refueling fees vary greatly between countries. In the United States, for example, the cost of refueling a hydrogen-powered car is four times that of recharging an electric car. However, this appears to be changing as well, with the cost of hydrogen fuel cells having plummeted by more than 80% in recent years. After considering the overall benefits and drawbacks of each vehicle type, how do electric and hydrogen cars compare in terms of range, charging, safety, pollution, and cost? The range of an electric automobile is significantly depending on the vehicle purchased. The Tesla Model S long range has a range of 375 miles, compared to a real-world range of 150 miles for the less-priced Nissan Leaf Ascenta. Hydrogen fuel cell vehicles have longer ranges and refueling durations. The Hyundai Nexo, for example, can travel 414 miles on a single charge and takes only 5 minutes to fill up, as opposed to the hours it can take to charge an electric vehicle. However, because there are no models at the low end of the market, hydrogen-powered vehicles remain expensive to purchase. Hydrogen fuel cell cars are not only more expensive than many electric vehicles, but they also have far less infrastructure for refueling. With just about 400 hydrogen refueling stations now in operation worldwide, including private ones. In the United Kingdom, for example, there are just 16 hydrogen refueling stations. This lack of infrastructure is now a significant disadvantage for hydrogen-powered vehicles, whereas electric vehicles already have thousands of charging stations around the world. Due to the highly flammable nature of hydrogen gas, which burns in air at concentrations ranging from 4 to 75 percent, safety has been viewed as a major concern for hydrogen fuel cells. Many of these potential safety hazards, however, have been addressed by technical advancements. The Toyota Mirai, for example, employs a unique design to avoid hydrogen leaking, while also turning off the flow of hydrogen in the event of a collision and storing the fuel tank outside the cabin, so that, in the unlikely event of a leak, the gas will vent harmlessly up into the atmosphere. Because hydrogen is lighter than air, it diffuses directly into space at a velocity of 20 miles per hour, making it safe unless huge amounts are permitted to accumulate in enclosed places. Electric batteries have their own set of safety considerations and obstacles. Overheating or overcharging lithium-ion batteries can result in harm. Furthermore, if a fire occurs, the batteries can burn and be difficult to extinguish because the fuel for the fire is not evacuated away as with hydrogen. To avoid overcharging, vehicle manufacturers have been striving to overcome these difficulties by managing temperatures and employing numerous sets of smaller batteries. As with any fuel source, hydrogen and electric vehicles face similar safety problems. While hydrogen and electric vehicles do not emit emissions from their exhausts, they are not zero-emission products. 
because carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere during the manufacturing processes. Lithium-ion battery manufacturing is an energy-intensive process that, when combined with charging-related emissions, results in an average of 124 grams of carbon dioxide per kilometer for a 100 kilowatt-hour battery. The manufacturing of hydrogen fuel cells isn't much better, with the Toyota Mirai fuel cell stacks emitting 120 grams of carbon dioxide each kilometer. Though this can be considerably reduced and the hydrogen is produced using renewable energy. Of course, as technology for hydrogen and electric vehicles advances, this might all change. Electric vehicles can be expensive to purchase, depending on the model and manufacturer. Even with government assistance to assist customers and lower prices. In addition to the cost of the car, owners may be required to pay a monthly battery rental fee. As previously said, the more expensive the model, the bigger the range it provides. As a result, while some cheap choices are available for roughly £20,000, they do not compare to the highest end of the market, around £65,000. The upfront expenditures are offset slightly by the cost of charging, which is approximately £35 to fully recharge a 100 kilowatt hour battery on a roadside charger in the UK and approximately £12 if recharging at home. Hydrogen vehicles are more expensive than electric vehicles, with no low-cost options available. The price of a new hydrogen vehicle is comparable to that of a high-end electric vehicle. Furthermore, the cost of refueling is higher, with a full tank costing roughly 50 to 75 pounds. It appears that battery electric vehicles presently have the advantage over hydrogen fuel cell cars. Albeit this is due in part to the fact that hydrogen is a less matured technology. However, given enough time and development, hydrogen could catch up even as electric vehicles continue to advance. This will, however, necessitate infrastructural investment to support hydrogen fuel cell drivers. Given this investment and potential improvements to reduce the costs associated with hydrogen cars, they have a good chance of challenging electric cars as the future of clean transportation. However, perhaps the actual answer lies in a shared landscape in which both types are incorporated into future transportation strategies. A fact, both types are less polluting than gasoline or diesel and should be included in a green revolution. So, what is the future of hydrogen and electric vehicles? Both require additional research and development, with electric vehicles requiring more efficient recycling of wasted batteries, faster charging periods, and longer ranges. Meanwhile, new infrastructure and lower costs are required for the extraction of hydrogen gas for fueling. In the interim, hybrid choices may be viable, but the ultimate goal is to replace combustion engines to provide a clean, green, and renewable transportation future. That's all. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe our channel. Like and share the videos and don't forget to hit the bell icon.